Digging up dinosaurs by Ali King. Have you ever seen dinosaur skeletons in a museum? I have. I visit them all the time. I went again yesterday. I saw a patosaurus. I saw Copetosaurus. I saw Iguanodon and Triceratops. I like to say their names. Scolosaurus was just where I had left him. And Tyrannosaurus Rex looked as fierce as ever. Tyrannosaurus used to scare me. I still can't believe how big it is. Just its head is almost twice my size. I'm not afraid of dinosaurs anymore. Sometimes I call them a bag of bones under my breath. I can spend hours looking at them. I used to wonder where they came from and how they got into the museum. But now I know. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. A few of them were as small as birds, but most were enormous. Some dinosaurs ate plants, some dinosaurs ate the meat of other dinosaurs, and some may have even eaten the eggs of other dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived almost everywhere on Earth. They lived for millions of years. Then they died out. No one is sure why they became extinct. But they did. There hasn't been a dinosaur around for 65 million years. Until about 200 years ago, no one knew anything about dinosaurs. Then people began finding things in rock. They found large footprints. They found huge mysterious bones and strange teeth. People were finding fossils. They began asking questions about them. Fossils are a kind of diary of the past. They are the remains of the plants and animals that died long ago. Instead of rotting or crumbling away, the remains were preserved and slowly turned to stone. First, dinosaur dies and sinks into a river. Then its flesh rots, its skeleton is covered by mud. In time, the mud and skeleton turns to stone. The dinosaur is hidden for millions of years. The earth changes. Some of the stones break away. Part of the dinosaur is exposed. Fossils tell us about life on Earth long ago. Everything we know about dinosaur comes from studying fossils. Fossil hunters found more and more big bones in different parts of the world. Scientists studied the fossils. They said the bones and teeth and footprints all belong to a group of giant reptiles that lived on Earth for millions of years. The giants were named Dinosauria, or terrible lizards. 1822, Marianne Mantel found the first dinosaur fossils in England. She discovered some giant fossil teeth. 1825, her husband, Dr. Gideon Mantel, named the animal Iguanodon or Iguana Tooth. Nine years later, he found mass of Iguanodon bones. 1841, Dr. Richard Owen named the giant reptiles Dinosauria. What finds these were? People crowded into museums to see them. But the dinosaur bones didn't just get up and walk there. They had to dug out of the ground, slowly and patiently. Even today, digging up dinosaurs is not an easy job. A team of experts must work together. Paleontologist, a scientist who studies ancient plants and animals. Geologist, a scientist who can tell the age of rocks and fossils. Draftsman, who draws pictures of the fossils. Walkers, who dig the fossils out of the rock. Photographer, who takes pictures of the find. Specialist, who prepare the fossil for the museum. This is how fossil hunters work. First, they have to find a dinosaur. 
They search along river banks and in quarries. They climb up high cliffs and down into steep canyons. We lock some spots a fossil bone poking through the rock. The site is covered with a tent and the work begins. Sometimes the fossil is buried so deep the rock around it has to be drilled or blasted. Tons of rubble are carted away. Scientists chip at the rock close to the fossil. They brush away the grit. They have to be very careful. As soon as a bone is uncovered, it is brushed with shellac. The shellac helps to hold the bone together so it won't crumble. Then the bone is numbered. Sometimes a skeleton has to be cut apart so that it can be moved. The draftsman draws each bone in its exact position and the photographer takes pictures. That way, there can be no mix-up later when someone tries to put the skeleton together. When the bones are ready to be moved, they are carefully wrapped. Small bones are wrapped in tissue paper and put into boxes or sacks. Large bones are left half buried in the rock. They will be dug out later in the museum. These fossils are covered with a plaster cast, just as a broken leg is. First, the parts of the fossil that show are covered with a wet tissue paper and then with strips or burlap dipped in wet plaster, then the whole piece is wrapped in the same way. When the plaster dries, it becomes very hard. The tissue paper covering makes the cast easier to remove later. Each bone is then packed in straw, put into a crate and taken to the museum. At the museum, scientists unwrap the fossil. They finish digging it out of the rock. They study the bone. Scientists dig out the fossil in many different ways. They use a hammer and chisel and fine needles, power tools that work like a dentist drill, special sandblasting machines and even chemicals that dissolve the rock but do not harm the fossil. They compare the bones to the other dinosaur bones. They compare them to the bones of other animals. Then they try to figure out what size and shape the dinosaur was. They try to find out how the dinosaur stood and walked, and what it ate. If there are enough bones, scientists are able to build a complete skeleton. A frame is made in the shape of the dinosaur to support the bones. The bones are wired together, one by one. They are held in place with pieces of metal. If any bones are missing, plastic or fiberglass ones are made to replace them. You can hardly tell the new bones from the old ones. After many months that work is complete, the dinosaur skeletons looks just as it once did. Until recently, only a few museums had dinosaurs. Then scientists learn how to make copies of the skeletons. The copy is hard to make. It takes a long time. The original skeleton has to be taken completely apart, bone by bone. A mold is made for each bone. The new pieces are made of fiberglass. A fiberglass dinosaur is just as scary as the original, but much stronger and lighter. The original bone is covered with rubber latex and an outer coating of fiberglass to hold the rubber stiff. This is peeled off the bone to form the mold. The inside of the mold is brushed with resin and filled with fiberglass. Many dinosaurs can be made from the same molds. Now museums all over the world have dinosaur skeletons and many people can spend hours looking at them the way I do. See you in the museum sometime!